Hello folks, this is Sean, back with another video from my channel 300 Baud, and today I'm going to take a look at an older LCD television to see if it'll make a good substitute as a display for your classic video game and computer systems. So let's get started. So I've been looking for the perfect monitor slash TV solution since I was about 12 when I got my first Atari 2600. Now with the Atari, originally it was hooked up to the family color television and it was wonderful. Uh, the Atari with its RF output, you can see it's got the RF cable hanging out the back, uh, worked really, really nicely with a color television. Um, now Ataris actually get disappointing when you do have high quality displays because we didn't grow up with a high quality display. So when you see a sharp pixelated um, game playing on an Atari, it just doesn't look right. Um, I did eventually graduate from the Atari to the Commodore 64. Originally my dad purchased it for his college and soon discovered that he wasn't really able to use it for what he was trying to do. And I ended up inheriting the Commodore 64. Um, it was originally hooked up to a 13-inch black and white television uh, through the RF cable. It worked. I could read it. It was a little fuzzy. Absolutely loved it. Had a good time with it. Sometime when I was around a freshman, I ended up getting a 13-inch uh, color television. Uh, again, it was hooked up through the RF. That TV did not have the ability to... It didn't have any composite input, so it was hooked up through RF. Um, but what is kind of interesting is the color palette that was chosen with the Commodore 64 and the font shape is actually designed to work with a standard television as well as a 40 column screen. So if you were trying to pump through an 80 column screen using a standard television set, the results would be very, very poor. I never had a decent uh, video solution because shortly after the Commodore 64, I ended up uh, getting an Amiga uh, 500. So... Let's take a look at the Amiga 500 really quick. So here is my beautiful Amiga 500. This is not my original Amiga 500. It's one that I bought a while ago. I uh, basically traded a null modem cable for it at a time when Amigas just really weren't worth a whole heck of a lot of money. But uh, this one I featured on my channel a couple of times. It's got a terrible fire processor upgrade in it. You want to see that video just take a look at uh, my other videos and uh, you'll find that one but uh, this is your standard grand half inch uh, floppy um, it's a double density drive so it has like 800k capacity i also have a, uh, a mouse for this one this is a trackball i use the heck out of this trackball um, i do have the original amiga mice i actually wore out amiga mice i used them so much i uh, actually wore the buttons out, the micro switches. Um, this one here, I've used this for many, many years. It's been working great. Um, it's a little gritty. I do have a nicer mouse, which I featured in my uh, in another video, so you can take a look at that. And another add-on that I used, this actually came with my Amiga, was one of these uh, A520 RF video adapters. So this little guy plugs right into your uh, RF or your RGB port in the back of the Amiga. Um, and it has a uh, audio in which you would take your left right channel sounds and um, bring them into this guy which would then effect effectively make it mono um, and then it would take the picture and uh, the audio and pump it out through the RF out either channel 3 or 4. That's going to give you really bad picture quality probably just work for games you wouldn't be able to do much else with it. It also has a video out um, which gives you reasonable picture quality. It's nothing to that's too great. I'll probably try to dis uh, show that in this uh, channel or in this video here, uh, but that is the Amiga 520 um, ad ad adapter. Uh, why don't we go ahead and maybe take a look at um, some of these things plugged into um, various solutions. So let's get to it. So new to the channel is my Sony KDL26ML130. Um, this is a television, but and it's only a 720 DPI screen. But I figured I'd give it a go because um, I've had several LCD televisions that offer very poor quality for um, basically any analog input. 
And this is an older unit. It's also a Sony, so I'm hoping for the best. But uh, you can see here it's got several um, of the buttons on the top, which I really like because you don't need a remote control to operate this television. Um, and I paid all of 35 bucks for it. So why don't we take a quick look at the back and see what it's got. So this television set was made in Mexico in August of 2007. What really drew me to this unit was the vast number of inputs. We've got VGA input, HDMI input, two of them actually, a left-right audio inputs. We have got two component inputs, S-video input, composite inputs, and on the side we've even got an additional composite input, which makes it really easy to plug in quick plug-and-play games. Speaking of plug-and-play, this is my Mammoth Toys DC TV all-in-one Commodore joystick. The text is easy to read and the games look great. So I've got three connectors running to the back of the television. I've got a standard composite going to the a video one input. I've got a uh, VGA connected via this cable. This is a uh, the 23 pin Amiga style RGB output and it's running to the VGA input on the back of the television, which I believe is a DB15 um, or something like that. And this uh, connector here is running to the uh, antenna input, so I can try to tune to channel three. So I think it would be interesting to start with the composite and plug it into the Amiga's mono, mono output and see what kind of picture we get with that. So this is a good start because it's definitely the easiest connection. Now this Amiga has a terrible fire accelerator. Sometimes it gets a little stubborn on the first boot up, not sure why, but if I give it a three finger salute, that usually fixes the problem. So let's go ahead and do that really quick. I'm gonna control, Alt, control Amiga Amiga. There it is, now it's booting. There. So this is a pretty good signal. It's, uh, it's very easy to read. It's very clear. This is monochrome. Um, you're not going to get um, anything too fancy out of this, which is a shame that they didn't put a composite color output. Now, uh, one thing you'll notice, if I move the mouse, I get a little bit of artifacting around the mouse, around animations, um, which I think is... Uh, you're very similar to what you get on the Amiga 3000, actually. I think I'm going to go into Preferences now. So this is the, uh, the low resolution. And I'm going to try changing my screen mode to a little bit higher resolution. So this is uh, NTSC High Res, which is uh, 640 by 200. Let's try High Res Laced, which should give me 640 by 400 in four colors. We'll say Use It. And now it's refreshed. Now, one thing I noticed, I was actually playing with this a little bit earlier, is that at first you see a little bit of flicker, uh, and then the flicker goes away. So the television is playing a little bit of magic. Uh, it looks really good when it's stationary, but again, when I move the mouse, I get a little bit of ghosting around the cursor, which is a little weird, but not terrible. So it's usable. Let's try, uh, see if I've got PAL working on this. Uh, we'll go to PAL, high res laced. Um, that'll be kind of curious. So this is going to give me a resolution of 640 by 512. Say use. Okay, so it's able to display the PAL screen, which is uh, pretty nice. This is Locke. He's trying to help me. He says, Dad, this is really boring. We should do something different. I think a game is in order. We have to try a game on this guy. Okay, so I'm not getting the full screen. It looks really nice though, surprisingly good, just black and white. So let's try restarting it in a PAL mode and see what happens. Let's try telling it to go into PAL. It's kind of weird, I'm not able to get it to go into PAL mode, so I might have to play with this a little bit more. Not too bad, no color, which is kind of a shame. Okay, so we've seen the Amiga running through the mono port. Now it's time to try the RF output on this little guy. Let me go ahead and move the Amiga and plug this bad boy in, make sure it's not turned on. Okay, one thing to note is uh, 
this takes a lot more room now. Um, so I might have to move the Amiga to the side a little bit so I can clear the foot of the television. And now I'm going to just plug in my uh, RF. I've got uh, just a standard RF cable here with a little adapter so I can plug it into the, com the composite style plug. It's an RCA style plug. So I've got that. And now let's just flip it on. And we're going to change our television input uh, to uh, TV. I won't get any sound because I didn't run my uh, audio leads into the uh, Amiga 520 adapter. So you don't really go from audio to over here and then it would feed out. Now it says no signal. Hmm. That's interesting. Channel 3, no signal. Oh, there it is. Okay, so this is uh, running through RF. It's actually surprisingly good. Let's try uh, starting up the game and see what it looks like. Okay, so screen's a little blurry, but it's usable. I can read the text. Um, I am on NTSC mode. It's not running in PAL, and this game is a PAL game, or this particular copy is a PAL game. So not bad, a little blurry, could be better, but not terrible. So if you're into the vintage gaming uh, experience, this is about as vintage as you're gonna get on Amiga. Let's go ahead and tell it to play. Again, no sound because uh, I don't have it hooked up properly, but very playable, not bad. Very cute. And this is actually a great arcade conversion for the Amiga. This is New Zealand story. Fantastic. Highly recommend it. All right, so let's hook up the Amiga now. Instead of using the RF, let's hook up our composite output. So I believe composite out yeah, is all the way over here. Nice thing about this is I can actually hook this up with the Amiga plugged in. It's not going to hurt any. Oh, there we go. A lot of cables to it deal with. Um, and now, since I got that hooked up, I should be able to just change my input by pushing the button to video one, and there it is. So that's an improvement. It's not as much of an improvement as you'd expect going from uh, RF to composite. Um, I think I should have sound now. Let's see if it will give me sound. Yeah, this is actually quite usable. So let's go into Workbench and see how this looks in Workbench. So this um, is a little blurry, um, not that good. So definitely worse than the mono. Um, it's readable, but not great. Now, I had been playing around with it a little earlier, and I think, oops, I don't have anything set up on this Amiga partition, but I got my Workbench over here. And uh, I can change the preferences. And from the preferences, we'll go into the screen modes and I'll run it at a higher resolution. So NTSC high res lay, so that's going to give us 640, 640 by 400. And use that. It's actually almost a little bit clearer, almost. So we do have a color screen. Um, not terrific. But one huge advantage to this LCD screen over a standard Commodore monitor or a television is you're not getting the flicker. So the Amiga has like a, a horrendous flicker when you go to high resolution on a 15 kilohertz signal, uh, but it looks pretty good. So that is the Amiga 500 hooked up to a standard television. Oh, one more thing actually. Let's see what the, this Amiga looks like on channel three. So actually tuning a high resolution screen over the uh, RF input. So that is definitely a little bit rougher. The color, I don't know if it's not really showing up real well here, but the color is very muddy. Um, not very attractive to look like, uh, to, not very attractive to look at. It's actually kind of a brownish color and it kind of changes um, color too as you're as you're moving around the screen. But uh, this is RF. It is usable, surprisingly usable. You could actually use this to do some typing and stuff. It's just, 
it's very ugly to look at. Uh, but there's no flicker, which is pretty impressive. So that wraps it up for the Amiga. Um, we took a look at the mono output, which was a very nice, clean picture. We also looked at uh, using the RF on the Amiga 520, as well as the composite output. There are many more uh, methods of getting a picture out on the Amiga to more modern displays. You can do convert uh, upscale up to VGA or even HDMI. There's internal and external solutions. Um, for this sake of this video, I'm not going to do that because I just wanted to see what it would look like on this Bravada TV using uh, just basic standard connectors on the Amiga. Oh, I did forget we did try the uh, Amiga RGB out to the back of the television. Unfortunately, that was a fail, but I was expecting that. Um, so that's it for the Amiga. So here I've got my Commodore 64. This is actually a Commodore 16 case that's been modified to fit a Commodore 64 motherboard. Uh, but this is not an original Commodore 64 motherboard. This is a MK2 by Individual Computers. Um, and, but it does use the Commodore chipset. So it's got, uh, this one actually has two SIDs uh, installed on it, they're, although they're not configured. Um, I also have a SD2IEC SD card reader that takes the place of a 1541 drive. I do have some 1541 drives, but uh, this is just so much more convenient because you can put basically all your programs on this one SD card and you're good to go. Um, along the back, you'll see I've got the drive plugged in. Uh, and I also have the gold is, uh, the gold cable is a S, or excuse me, S video cable. Um, and the one next to it is a uh, mini DIN uh, audio jack. So that's your left right connections. There's the picture. It looks really good. It's very clear, very sharp, easy to read. Um, there's a bit of a checkerboard pattern, but uh, it's, uh, it's very, very nice. So let's go ahead and load a game and take a look at how that looks. Here's Dig Dug, and it really looks quite fantastic. Um, there's a slight checkerboarding effect. I'm not sure if that's the TV doing that, but uh, it looks really nice. So let's go ahead and start a quick game and see what this thing plays like. So yeah, this is a great monitor for the Commodore 64 or any system that's going to run on S video. You're going to get a really nice clean picture. So let's take a look at the Atari 2600 going through RF and see how that looks. So here's one of my Atari 2600s. I bought this one probably about 10 years ago at a thrift store. Um, it came in the box and it also came with these uh, four games here um, and I paid Oh, and a joystick, and a really nice joystick at that. And I paid somewhere around 60 bucks for it, which is more than what I'd typically pay, but uh, I'm glad I got this one because it's in really nice shape. And uh, so it's not a six switcher, but we'll forgive it for that. Um, now with the Atari 2600, um, there's a couple of ways to hook these guys up. The first is to use the switch box that they came with. Um, and, you know, originally the TVs back in the 80s, they just had these little connectors here. Um, and later they came, came with the, this type of connector. So typically you need one of these little adapters. I had to buy this one um, at a thrift store for 50 cents because I couldn't find my original one. Um, and this allows you to plug up your uh, antenna and the game and then be able to switch between the two. Um, these uh, do tend to kind of go crusty and bad over time. So I don't know how well this one's gonna work. Uh, the second way, to hook up Atari is to, you know, you have your lead coming out of the back of the Atari and you have one of these little adapters where you can plug it in and then just screw it into the back of the uh, television. Now, of course, with this, uh, you know, going into your antenna, um, you're not going to be able to tune anything afterwards. But in the case of what I'm going to do, I don't care about that. So why don't we go ahead and uh, I'm going to hook up the Atari to the switch box and see uh, what kind of signal we get out of it um, going through the RF switch box. Um, I'm not expecting really good results, but uh, well, we'll see. I'll make sure we have it on game and plug it in the back. So let me do that really quick. 
Okay, so I'm back. Um, the Atari is plugged into the television. Um, television is tuning to channel three. Uh, next thing, I'll grab a game, and why not um, grab Frogger? This is a pretty good game. This was uh, pre um, released by pa Parker Brothers for the Atari uh, 2600. Um, and uh, for the Atari, this has actually got really nice graphics, so I'm going to go ahead and pull this game out. Um, Parker Brothers is one of my favorite publishers uh, from back in the uh, 80s. Um, Activision being my top pick. I think Magic after that, and then Parker Brothers falls in someplace around there. They did just did a really nice job with their games. Let's go ahead and plug the Frogger in and flip it on and see what happens. Oh, there we go. Okay, so... Uh, really bad picture quality. Let me try flipping the switch box a couple of times, see what happens. So messing around with it, I can get it to tune a little better, but this is pretty awful. Oh, there we go. So yeah. Okay. So this is, uh, this is very typical. Um, I got a lot of, a lot of interference or noise or something, a lot of sparkling going around. Um, so obviously not the nicest way to uh, play Atari, but it works. Um, I think if you were to take the switch box apart and clean it with some alcohol, uh, the contacts probably get better results. Um, so it's actually improved a little bit. So let me try hooking it up directly with the little adapter and see what kind of picture we get from that. All right, so I got the lead from the back of the Atari pl uh, plugged into this little adapter, and this is just gonna screw into the antenna input on the television. So let me do that real quick and we'll take a look at the picture. Okay, so I'm plugged in as direct as I can get it to the television. So let's see what happens when I flip this guy on. Look at that. That's actually a very impressive picture for an Atari 2600. Um, very easy to read. I can see all the pixels, um, which uh, as I was saying earlier, you're not really used to seeing pixels on an Atari 2600. Everything was a little bit fuzzier back in the day. But I actually like this. This is a really nice, clean picture. So that pretty much wraps it up for this video. I'd say this old Sony Bravado is going to be a very nice television for my classic computer video game consoles and computer systems. Um, it's got a lot of different inputs. Uh, everything from composite to component to uh, HDMI to um, uh, VGA. So. It's going to take a lot of different inputs. Um, one thing I am very surprised about is um, it is a lower resolution screen. It's not full HD. It's only 720, but it doesn't seem to really impact the picture quality at all. So that's it for, uh, for now, and I hope you'll join me later for another video. Until then, take care of yourself, and goodbye.